Okay guys, so following on from this uh, sort of adding NPCs uh, sort of series of videos, um, this time we're going to add in another character, but this time this one is actually going to be moving around uh, the map a little bit um, on like a sort of like a set location to location, the easiest way we can possibly do it really. Um, so what we're going to do is first of all head back to Mixamo again. Um, if you didn't see the introduction to Mixamo, Mixamo before, it'd be in um, the video where we first put NPCs into the map. So this time what I've done is I've, I've collected this character and I found a, an actual walking animation this time rather than the idle animation that I found last time. So uh, again, what we need to do is we need to make sure when we've got a character that is moving from place to place that this in place uh, checkbox is ticked um, so that it's not jumping back to, to the original location when it's in game. Um, again, you can play around with these settings, but I'm just going to download it as it is. So I'm going to hit download. Um, I'm not going to worry about any of the settings. This time I'm going to go back to having with skin uh, because I haven't uh, imported the character yet. So let's hit download. And there we go. Let's go back to our Unreal uh, game. I'm going to go back to my characters folder and this time I'm going to make another new folder called Ninja. Let's call it Nail this time. Okay, and in this folder I'm going to import uh, my that's the one crouched walking is the one I just did. So open and import animations is on and that's fine. Import all. Uh, okay. The following bones are missing from the bind pose. That might actually cause an issue. Let's see. Seems fine. Um, we'll carry on for now. The, I have had instances before where the characters from Mixamo haven't worked the way I've wanted them to, um, so it's the it's, it's possible, but we'll, we'll carry on for now. Um, so I'm going to go and create a blueprint again for this, and it's going to be a character because it definitely needs to be able to walk around. Uh, ninja male. Uh, I've got a mesh here, and I'm going to add the mesh for the ninja. And I'm going to add the, not a blueprint, it's just an asset, the walking animation. Okay, let's bring it back down to about there. Okay, that's fine. So if we were to just pop him into the game now, put him over here somewhere, something like that, and push play. So we can see he's there, he needs to be lower down a bit, but he's obviously just walking on the spot which isn't ideal, it's not what we want. Now if you did want to make this a little bit more complicated so that it was in an idle position and then changed to the walking position um, then you would have to use an animation blueprint um, which isn't what we're going to do right now because this character is set up to always be walking around. So to get him moving we're going to go back into his blueprint, go to the event graph uh, get rid of those. We just we want the event begin play, and all we're going to use. We're not going to set up any paths or anything. You you could have it set along a path, but um, this is going to be the even even easier way. It's going to get an AI move to. Uh, the pawn that's just moving is going to be itself. So just get a reference to self, and then the destination. We could type in the location we want it to move to here, but that, that gets a bit. Um, kind of faffy. Uh, I'm going to make variables, so um, uh, let's just call it point 0.1 and then we need to make it a vector. So point 0.1 is the, the place we want it to move to first. So let's say our character um, started over here and we want it to move to over here. So that's where we want to move to first. It was going to walk from there to here. So I'm just going to copy that location, just um, put him back where I want him to start. Come into the blueprint and this variable that I made, make sure you compile it first. And you can just paste that location into that variable. So point one, let's 
drag it in, it's that destination. So it's literally going to just move to that location. Simple as that. <laughs> um, so let's minimize that. If we were to push play, you notice that it isn't moving still and it's still floating a bit. That's fine. Uh, so what we need to do is we need to add a volume called the nav, nav, nav <laughs> mesh bounds volume. Let's put that in there. Uh, notice mine's gone green. That's because I've got P, the P key turned on. You can toggle that on and off. It is useful. So I'm just going to fill the area. This is essentially the, the um, pathfinding area. Um, so the area you want your uh, it to be able to move in which is all of that green area there. So I'm going to push P again to turn that off. Push play. And see how he's moving along. Obviously he's moving at a speed that I don't like. Uh, and he's still floating. And he's turned the wrong way. So there's a few things we need to fix. So go back to viewport. See this blue arrow? That is the um, position that it should be facing. So I'm going to rotate to 90 degrees. Or 100. No, that's not right. <laughs> 90, there we go. Um, and he still needs to be moved down a little bit more. There we go. That's fine. Push play. And there you can see he's moving along, but he's moving kind of at a speed that I don't like. I'm going to fix that in a minute, but what I want to do now is just show you how he, he might you might be wanting to walk on a on like a, a path like a from one place to another so all we need to do is just do a, another move to so i can copy and paste that rather than doing it on that one you want to do it on success so like when it's done that it will move on and you can make another lo location so um, you can have point two um oops So point two can be, um, he'll then move over like here or something. So we can take that location, undo that move, go to point two, paste that in there, compile it. And then the pawn is always going to be the same. So we can just reuse that. And then the point two destination can go to here. Okay, so on success, when that is done, it will move to there. Let's compile that again. Then he'll move up to there, and then he'll move up to there. Notice he does turn to face the way that he's supposed to be facing. So I want him to go kind of uh, in a circle. So um, well, the next place he'll want to move to is up kind of there. So let's copy that location, undo him back. Point three, paste, and then uh, his current location I want to take as well, because that's the starting point, so it's, it's also the end point, so point four, paste, and then we just need to do a couple more of these, copy paste. Copy paste. Um, self coming to all of these. And then point three. And point four. So obviously you can do that as many times as you wanted to. Up to you. Hit compile. And then push play. And he's just going to walk around this area. Uh, doesn't like it when you get stuck there. What have I done? Uh, don't know what's happened there. Something to do with the nav mesh? Nope. Shouldn't be.
Why aren't you turning? Ah, hmm. oh, silly me. I haven't done the on success. There we go. So on success for each of those. Let's try that again. So it goes up to there. Goes around here, and now he's going to go over that way. And he should now, well, actually, he'll stop here. I need to do one more thing on the blueprint. There we go. So, all we need to do now, if we want that to just be a loop, is that when this um, finishes so on success, it goes right around to there again, back around to the first one. Let's test that one more time. Just watch him go around. And the last thing we'll need to do is just fix his speed. So obviously this is like a big area he's walking around. You can the area can be whatever you want. As you can see, you could just put in whatever location details you want, and then he just keeps going around, around, around. Okay. Okay. So the last thing we need to do is just fix his speed. So um, all we need to do is very simple. Go into the uh, blueprint again. Um, we've got the character movement information here, so we can find the maximum walk speed. So 600 is um, is essentially exactly the same as what the default is for the player character, if that's anything to go by. But um, this will take some tweaking probably. So if we start with like 200, click compile, push play. Now what you want to do is just make sure it works with the animation. So we can see there's some sliding still going on. He sort of steps and then slides. That's what we want to avoid. So he's actually going to have to go pretty slowly to fit in with this particular animation. Um, where has it gone? There we go. Back to, to 100. Push play. OK. Maybe it needs to be a little bit faster. As I say, it takes a bit of tweaking. Um, maybe one. 125, let's say. Okay, I think we've got it there. So if we wanted a character that moved faster, then obviously what we could do um, is we can come back here and sort of go into the speed. And if we crank that right up, then he's going to be moving a bit faster, and then that would allow us to up the movement speed in the game. So you can still use the same animations, but you can you can change these. I think overdrive would probably make it even faster as well. Yeah, there you go. If you want, <laughs> wanted him to be really fast like that for some reason. Um, but yes, that's all customizable. So there we go. We now have uh, our idle character over here. He's kind of standing around waiting for something. And then we have our character that is just sort of walking around the place, patrolling the area. Um, and of course, obviously, this is just using animation assets, not animation blueprints. If you wanted these to sort of like when I approached her, she like ran off or, or changed or did something or this guy, you know, when he saw me to start um, coming after me or something, um, you know, you, you would have to do that a bit differently. But this is just for the simplest way of doing the character moving around on a patrol. OK, so that's all for now.